So notice what I have here. I have a bunch of 5-inch uh, sanding disks, um, and I've written in a permanent marker on the back side of them what grit they are. Um, and the reason for doing this is because they had the grits labeled, but they were really hard to see. Okay, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to store these on top of each other, like a so. Um, but with little paper separators in between them because I didn't want the ink to bleed from one onto the next. And so I set them out on a sheet of paper. I was thinking you could fit three of these on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and they almost fit, they just don't quite. So let me show you what, I'm, what I mean here. Take the camera. As you can see, they almost fit on that sheet of paper but not quite. So it was really annoying. It was really annoying, and I thought, well, if they almost fit, you know, the little separators probably don't have to go all the way out to the edge anyways. So then the question was, what's the biggest radius of a circle that I could fit, that I could fit three identical circles on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper? Okay, so that's the problem. You can see that I did solve it here. Notice those circles fit perfectly to each other and to the sides of the paper. I'm quite proud of that. They fit perfectly. So here's what I did. I, I grabbed a napkin and started drawing some stuff. And what you see here is a drawing that I made. The circles have to be tangent to each other, and the radius of the circle is r, which is unknown. And notice the little red right triangle in the middle uh, you can measure that the dimensions of that are going to be um, the sides are five and a half inches minus r, uh, eight and a half inches minus two r, and two r on the hypotenuse. Okay, so once I had that figured out, then you can use Pyth the Pythagorean theorem. It says that the sum of the squares of the lengths of the sides is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So there's the equation there, 8.5 minus 2r squared plus 5.5 minus r squared equals 2r squared. You work that equation out, notice the plus 4r squared on either sides cancel to each other, and you simplify all of the terms and you get 102.5 minus 45r plus r squared equals 0. Now how are you going to solve that for r? That's a quadratic equation. So you want to use the quadratic formula, of course. And I used, I, I had a simple calculator, but that was all I used here. So remember the quadratic formula? Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a? Well, I plug in the numbers I have. Positive 45 plus or minus the square root of, and b squared minus 4ac worked out to be 2025 minus 410 over 2 works out to be 22.5 plus or minus 20.09 inches. 42.59 inches is obviously the wrong answer. The right answer is the 2.41 inches. So come back onto my little paper here, 2.41 inches. I grab my little trusty engineer's ruler, which is also a really handy thing to have because it measures things in tenths of an inch. So I can measure 2.41 inches and then I can make circles of radius 2.41 inches for the compass on that paper. And I know that they fit exactly onto that 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper.